This video tutorial will help you to get started with key performance indicators in BC Design Online. We are now on the KPIs tab with uh, some sample data. Let's add a new indicator. It's easy. I need to select parent item for the new indicator and click Add button on the toolbar. We can move this item within the scorecard. Depending on its position, it can become a goal if we move it upper or even a perspective. Let's undo the changes and continue with the setup of this item in the role of indicator. On the general tab, we can enter its name, change its icon by clicking on the area near the name field, and explain more details about the measurement process in the description field. We can select the qualitative or quantitative measurement units for this indicator. In uh, another video, we discuss all the possibilities that the software provides in this context. The next property is the owner of the indicator. Here we can select some users from the account. The owners can receive notifications about important updates for the indicator. Now let's explore the data tab. Let's enter some data manually. You need to select the date in the calendar on the right and then enter the current value, the baseline and the target in the fields below. In a different video tutorial, we discussed various ways to load data into the scorecard. Besides manual data input, you can import data from spreadsheets, connect to the external database or use RESTful API. Why does the software need all this data? It uses this information to normalize the indicator. In other words, it uses a scale from baseline to target to calculate the performance or the progress of the indicator. In this way, all indicators on the scorecard become comparable to each other. In most cases, it's enough to have the baseline target scale. In some cases, you can deactivate simple input mode in this checkbox and use additional scale from min to max. We dedicated one of the video tutorials to that topic. You can watch it later. Uh, for now, it's enough to know that this possibility exists. On the performance tab, you can select the optimization function for the indicator. There might be indicators where uh, Higher value means higher performance, like, for example, customer satisfaction indicator. Uh, the optimization function for search indicators is maximization. Some other indicators, like, for example, uh, response time, will increase their performance when the value decreases. In this case, the optimization function is minimization. Also, the optimization function defines the stoplight scholar uh, that is shown for the indicator. Right now, this indicator has a green stoplight because its performance is high. To customize the stoplights, you have two options. The recommended way is to select an optimization function according to your needs, or even introduce your own formula. Another possibility is to use the Tools menu and select Stoplight setting, 
comment there. With the uh, weight property, you can tell the software about the importance of this indicator compared to other indicators aligned with the same goal. Weight will impact the way the total performance of the goal is calculated. In one of the video tutorials, we talked about calculating scorecards and the way the software uses weight for the calculations. On the context tab, you can change the type of indicator. It can be leading or lagging indicator, depending on uh, if it is aligned with success factor or expected outcomes. The type of indicator defines the way that this indicator impacts the performance of its parent item. It's an interesting, interesting topic and we have dedicated a separate video tutorial to it. Additional controls on the context tab uh, allow adjusting the visual appearance of an indicator on the map. The uh, glyph setting defines the icons that appear next to the indicator on the map, like these icons here. And strategic theme option defines the strategic theme where this item belongs to. With these properties, we did a basic setup of an indicator. What if you need to add action-related details to the indicator? You can click on the Initiatives button and add more details there. Now, let's click on Value Set Data button to see how the software can help us organize the data. Here we have three additional properties. Update interval that defines the rules that the indicator should follow when new data is entered. Value inheritance that defines what values should be shown for the periods where there is no specifically entered data. And data grouping that shows how the aggregated values for the indicator should be calculated. In a separate video tutorial, uh, you'll find a detailed explanation about how to use these settings. Finally, it's a good thing to mention that all the changes that we did to in an indicator were reflected in the KPIs table. The columns uh, of the table are fully customizable. For example, we can show here an update interval or initiatives aligned with the indicator. And to customize the columns, you can click on this, on this button here. That was a quick overview of the KPIs tab. Feel free to contact our customer support team if you have any questions.